Hi, this is Kate from Minute Earth. Ever since rich British folks invented dog shows as a spectator sport in the late 1800s, people have been parading pooches around with the goal of taking the top spot in their dog's so-called breed group. These breed groups are based on the historical jobs dogs were bred to do, with game retrievers like Labs and Spaniels in the sporting group, guard dogs like Dobermans and Mastiffs in the working group, and herding dogs like Collies and Sheepdogs in, well, the herding group. And although most dogs today are just butt-sniffing layabouts, their breed group still influences how we think about them, which is why dog breed organizations describe dogs in the sporting group as attentive, dogs in the herding group as smart, and dogs in the working group as courageous, but perhaps unsuited for families with young kids. However, two decades of canine research have revealed that, while dogs in a given breed group often share certain skills, they don't really have that much else in common. In one study in Sweden, researchers ran more than 13,000 dogs of 31 different breeds through a course full of sounds, surprises, and random humans attempting to snuggle. They found that levels of playfulness, curiosity, sociability, and aggression did not differ among breed groups. Even weirder, it turned out that golden retrievers are more similar to Rottweilers than they are to their fellow sporting dogs, and boxers are more like labs than they are like other working dogs. In fact, most dogs act more like breeds outside their group than they act like other breeds within their group. What's more, dozens of canine intelligence studies have shown that when it comes to skills like solving mazes and following commands, all breed groups perform about the same, even though some individual dogs are definitely smarter than others. So have dog enthusiasts somehow been imagining all of these differences among breed groups? Maybe. Psychology research suggests that once we begin to see something in a particular way, we naturally seek out evidence that strengthens that image and ignore evidence that undermines it. But the truth is that you can't judge a bark by its cover. Hey, this is Kate, and this is my adorable rascal, Watson. Hopefully you enjoyed this video because we had a ton of fun making it. Come join us in the comments section where we can chat about dog breeds and confirmation bias, and you can share your dogs with us. Also, if you like what we do, please consider joining our Patreon community at patreon.com slash minute earth. Our patrons help us continue to make videos about the weird and wonderful planet we call home, and they get access to some pretty cool exclusive perks along the way. If you can't support us, don't worry about it, but make sure to subscribe to Minute Earth to get access to all our latest videos. Thanks, and we'll see you next time. Hey, it's Kate again, and this is my adorable rascal, Watson. <laughs> and they get access to some pretty cool perks along the way. Watson, come back.